Superhero stuff is extraordinarily popular right now, and it has been for a long time, and even before it was this culture-consuming monolith that it is now, they were always pretty big. I don't think anyone's really going to dispute me on that. Like, comic book superheroes have been around for a really long time, and depending on how you define superhero, you could, superheroes, you could even go back into, like, ancient myths about Hercules and stuff and say that they've been around even longer. Uh, but as they became more and more popular in the modern day, people have tried to subvert the idea of uh, what a superhero story is like and change it around a little with stuff like The Boys or Invincible or uh, The Reckoners or just, you know, things like that. And I've talked about this phenomenon before. Enter Invincible, which is a comic series written by Robert Kirkman, who also wrote The, Ro the Walking Dead, and it also recently got an Amazon show, which is pretty good, and that's what brought it into uh, the mainstream, I would say. And a lot of people look at it in this light. You know, uh, I myself thought that at first as well. And they look at it as, oh, okay, this is a subversion of superhero stuff. This is like a little bit darker and it takes a different approach to it and this is a more realistic look at it. And after finishing the comic series, I have to sit here and ask, like, is it really a subversion? It, uh, it, it really isn't. It, it isn't. And uh, so from this point forward, it's just going to be massive spoilers for the whole series, the whole comic series. So if you haven't read it and you're planning to, or if you only watch the show or something, just beware of that. Um, my overall thoughts on the comic are that it is really good, really solid. Uh, it's just not much of a subversion after a certain point. All right, here, I'll show you. Ah! Huh. There, see? Uh... Now he'll tell me everything. Okay, but you're going to catch him, right? Yeah. In a second. So, for those of you who have not read Invincible, or who have read it and just want a refresher, uh, it takes place in a world just very similar to Marvel or DC Comics. Mo mostly seems to be drawing from DC, though. It's just a world full of tons of different superheroes and tons of different supervillains all going around doing their thing, and many of whom are direct parodies or homages to uh, stuff from DC Comics. Like, for example, the Guardians of the Globe are based on the Justice League. Uh, they have... I don't remember his name, but he's this fish dude with uh, water powers who's clearly kind of poking fun at Aquaman. Uh, Darkwing is meant to be an XP of Batman, like that, that sort of thing. And a lot of the villains are similar. Uh, but then outside of that, they also are in this huge universe which is full of alien civilizations and there's multiple dimensions that they can go into where things are slightly different and just things like that. You know, it's this huge world full of magic and crazy technology and powers that just sort of happen and there's no real reason for it. Like, it's a big world, very similar to other superhero stuff. And enter the main character, whose name is Mark Grayson, aka Invincible. And he is, he has superpowers, he becomes a hero pretty early on. His father is a guy named Omni-Man. Now, Omni-Man is meant to be Superman-esque. You know, he is this godly, powerful hero who just goes around saving everybody. Now, he doesn't have all of Superman's powers. Like, he has the, excuse me, super strength, speed, durability, and he can fly, and I think that's about it. He doesn't have super senses the way Superman does. He doesn't have laser vision. He can't shoot smaller cells, uh, versions of himself out of his hands the way Superman could for a while. Like, he's he's meant to be Superman-esque in that he's godlike and very far above everybody else, but he is not completely fucking immortal the way Superman is. But anyways, the point is, after uh, just a couple of chapters in the comic and in the first episode of the show, uh, we learn that Omni-Man is just a space Nazi. You know, he's a representative of this empire called uh, the Viltrum Empire. His people are called Viltrumites. And they came to Earth, uh, or rather, he came to Earth to prep it for being conquered. Like, you know, and in fact, he kills the Guardians of the Globe very early on in the series uh, because they are one of the most powerful forces on Earth and he needs to soften up the planet. Now, once this becomes public, he and Mark fight really badly and eventually Omni-Man just leaves the planet. He decides, you know what, I can't kill my son, I don't really feel like conquering anymore, so he, he just leaves. And after that, uh, people realize, like, okay, he left, but the entire empire is out there. You know, so now what? And this beginning part is definitely a subversion. You know, it's a more realistic look at, like, 
what it would happen if this godlike alien came to Earth. Like, he probably wouldn't be here to make friends. You know, it's not like uh, Superman landing and then just being raised as a kid in Kansas and then suddenly becomes a Boy Scout. Like, it, it would probably be a lot different. Uh, and after that, there's a bunch of different plots that go on. Uh, but the main thing, at least for the first half of the series, is about fighting the Viltrumites and the Viltrumite Empire and trying to prevent them from conquering Earth as well as some of the other places. Now, there are some other story arcs which are also pretty subversive and they do take a different look at the way superhero stories do things. Like, for example, there's a bunch of parts where Mark just screws up. You know, he trusts the wrong people or he thinks he's helping and he winds up just not being able to to do anything, or rather, he does the wrong thing and it just makes things worse. Uh, or, for example, uh, at one point he learns that a bunch of the villains and stuff that he's been capturing have been going, getting imprisoned by the government, but the government isn't just locking them in a cell, they are actually working with them and using their expertise to help protect the planet. Like, they, they just go full Operation Paperclip on this, and Mark is pissed off about that. And, yeah, it's a interesting look at it, because there's this... It's an agency called the Global Defense Agency, even though it's only part of the U.S. government, but granted, a lot of Americans think that we are the entire world, so I guess the name kind of fits, but anyways, they uh, the Global Defense Agency is there to protect the Earth, and so sometimes they do some unpleasant things, and they aren't just a benevolent uh, organization, and Mark is upset about that, and yeah, that's a little bit more intelligent and a little bit more realistic look at this sort of thing than we would usually get in comic books. And uh, also, again, spoilers, later when they defeat the Viltrumites, they don't do it through brute force, at least at first. Like, they they wind up hurting them badly enough that they have to bring them to the negotiating table, and then they have to let the Viltrumites just live on Earth as long as they agree not to make any trouble. And that's uh, it's a <laughs> kind of unexpected. And then the last half of the series is a bunch of other subplots, some of which work, some of which don't. But the point is, some of these are actually subversive. But as it goes on, it just becomes more and more of a regular superhero tale. Like, you know, the, the bad guys are defeated by punching them really hard. You know, like, you still have these cartoony villains coming in saying, I shall destroy and or conquer everything, and then the heroes defeat them. Like, now, don't get me wrong, this is a style. It's a style that can be done well, or it can be done poorly. And I think it's done well in this instance, but it's just, it's not a subversion. It, it just isn't. And uh, plus, it actually ends. You know, that with most superhero stuff, uh, at least Western superhero stuff, it's, like, where would you even begin to read Batman comics? Like, there's like 15 different runs of it, and some of them are in different dimensions, and sometimes it he goes into other heroes' comics that you have to read in order to get the whole story like it who knows where to even begin whereas with invincible just start at chapter one you know <laughs> and it it goes on for a while and then it ends like that's the end of the story so that is quite a bit different at least and that's a positive but yeah most arcs end with the heroes just punching out the bad guys like for example there's an arc about uh there's a character who at first they just call him robot because you know he's just an intelligent robot that helps fight crime and stuff but then later you find out it's actually a drone being piloted by another guy whose name is uh, Rudolph, and look, that's a, it's a long story. But basically, Rudolph conquers the Earth and becomes a dictator and kills a bunch of other heroes, and, but then he makes everything awesome, like he wipes out crime and hunger and stuff, which I'll get to that in a minute. But then at the end of the series, the way they defeat him is not by, you know, breaking his power base, it's not by... Uh, showing him or the world that his ways are wrong. It's just Mark kills him. You know, he, he, he just kills him. He's like, okay, you can't rule anymore because you're fucking dead. He also has a final battle against the main villain, whose name is Thrag, the leader of the Viltrumites. He, he like, fights him on the surface of the sun. And it's really stupid, but also really cool. But back to what I was saying about Robot. Like, he takes over the world, he kills a couple of other heroes so that they don't get in his way, and then he makes everything awesome. And... Like, I, I kept reading this thinking, like, okay, they're, they're trying to make a point about how even though what he did was wrong, he did make the world better, and even after he's ruling, it's not like he is killing dissenters or anything, unless they're heroes who violently oppose him. Like, just regular people don't even really realize he's in charge, so 
it, for most people, this is actually better. It's really just that he killed some heroes at the beginning that makes him bad. And I kept thinking, like, okay, eventually they're going to make some sort of argument against this, or maybe it'll turn out that he tries to run it himself and it just doesn't work and it falls apart or something, but no, Mark just kills him. Like, what, what kind of ending to a story arc is that? Like, I, I thought you were going to say something kind of profound and you didn't. But what's even more annoying is that, again, it's a dictatorship where everything is awesome and well run and that has never happened ever. Like, no country that has ever been a dictatorship has ever been run all that well, okay? And if you're thinking of like, oh, what about this example? You're wrong, okay? Either you are just ignorant about how things worked or you're buying into their propaganda and they're, they're lying to you, okay? It, particularly ideologically uh, motivated dictatorships like hardline Stalinists or fascists or uh, hardline neoliberals, which are basically fascists, they want you to think that they're super efficient and that they will come in and fix all the chaos and that the economy and everything will be better, but this never happened. Never once. They are riddled with corruption and nepotism and just plain incompetence because loyalty is more important than knowing what you're doing when they uh, put people into posts. Like, it, it doesn't work on any level and it never has. And so it really annoys me when people write that into books and stuff. But with that out of the way, yeah, most of these story arcs just end with the bad guys being beaten up and or killed. But that said, it is still fun. You know, there's still some fun fights and stuff. And I will give it this, like, it has weird ideas there and it goes all out with them. You know, it, it doesn't just uh, try to be all dark and realistic and gritty, like something like uh, The Dark Knight, for instance. I mean, I like those movies, but they are very much trying to be a dark, realistic take on a sort of Batman character, so there's no magic or superpowers or anything, whereas in this universe there is magic and there's tons of superpowers, just like the whole kitchen sink is thrown in there. <clears throat> and so when weird things happen, they just take it and run with it. Like, for example, there's a story arc where this guy has the power to travel between all sorts of different dimensions and goes into different ones where, like, Things are a little different, but not all that different. And then he brings in a bunch of evil versions of Mark, you know, Invincible, and then just brings them into our world and they start destroying shit on Earth and all the heroes have to fight them. And it's like, well, that's really weird, but it's also kind of cool. And they just, they go out all out with it. You know, they don't try and pretend it's uh, realistic because X, Y, Z or anything like that. It's just like, no, or th this is weird. Or for another example, the main villain, Thrag, you know, the leader of the Viltrumites, finds a planet full of these bug aliens who reproduce really quickly, and then he just fucks all of the bug women that he can find and makes an army of half Viltrumites, like just thousands and thousands of them, and uses them to try and conquer the Earth. Like, okay, that's weird, but <laughs> it's, it, okay, yeah, it just, at least it's putting it in there, you know, it's creative, and I didn't see it coming. Or how about how the Guardians of the Globe are just straight up led by Abraham Lincoln? Like, that's not even a joke. Like, at the beginning of the show and the comic, they kind of hint that maybe this dude was Abraham Lincoln a long time ago, but then later in the comic, they just come right out and say it. Like, he just says, Yeah, I felt kind of bad for John Wilkes Booth because he had to be executed for killing me, but, I mean, I didn't want to blow my cover. And I wasn't even dead. Like, is... It's just so strange, but, you know, I'm glad that it just went all out with it. And it does bring up some smart ideas at a few points, which seem like they might be subversive. Like, for example, uh, after a while, Mark starts wondering, like, why don't heroes actually fix anything? You know, all we do is hang around and then wait for bad guys to attack, and then we go and defeat the bad guys, and then we just let things sit as they are. Like, why don't we try and fix anything like climate change, or try and... Uh, come up with any systemic problems to fix crime or anything like that and that's a really good point but uh, it doesn't really go anywhere you know it's mostly just oh Mark tries to fix things and then it uh, falls apart again now overall like, like I said earlier this is still a good fun dark series you know like even if it's not super subversive and dark and gritty after a while it's still uh, well done superhero stuff you know, there are some solid characters that develop and change over time. You know, Mark goes from being an kind of unsure of himself and not sure how to be a hero to being kind of an arrogant git. And then as time goes on, he becomes a better person and a better hero. 
and it works really well. Uh, and then his girlfriend, Adam Eve, you know, she goes through her own arc. You know, she's not just Invincible's girlfriend. She has her own personality, her own feelings. Their relationship goes through a lot of ups and downs. <clears throat> they have some serious issues. Like, at one point, she has an abortion, and <clears throat> it's not really shown to be good or bad. I don't think it's really making a statement uh, on being pro or anti-abortion in this uh, series, but <clears throat> it's mostly focusing on how it affects her and how whether it was the right thing or the wrong thing, it's just, it was difficult for her. Or hell, how about Rex, otherwise known as Rex Splode? Like, he starts off as just a major, major douchebag to everyone around him, but then as it goes on, we learn about his backstory and it kind of explains why he is the way he is, even if it doesn't excuse all his behavior, it's still interesting. And then some bad things happen to him and he grows up and he becomes a better person and he gets one of the most badass deaths in the whole series. Like, it's when he's fighting one of the evil other-dimensional invincibles, and he his power is that he can basically charge up things and then throw them and they explode, and he just runs out of stuff to use, and the other invincible points that out. He's like, ha-ha, you can't fight me now. And, he's, and Rex just supercharges his own skeleton and then blows himself up along with the evil invincible and half the city they're fighting in. It's, it's really cool. Like... The characters in this grow and develop, even the minor ones, and I think that's great. There are also some amazing fights. Like, I already mentioned the multi-dimensional invincibles, that part's great. But then there's also uh, the Viltrumite named Conquest, who comes to Earth uh, long after Omni-Man left, and Mark is supposed to be pre preparing Earth for takeover by that point because of some other plot things that happen. And then Conquest is like, well, you haven't been preparing it, so I gotta kill you and I get to conquer the planet now. And then they just fight. And it's fucking cool. Like, by the end of it, Mark has shattered both of his hands so he can't use them anymore, so he just headbutts uh, Conquest to death. And it's... Whoa, like, that's, that's cool. Or how about another point where they're fighting the Viltrumite Empire, and Omni-Man, Mark, and a couple of others get together, and they just fl bunch up, and they fly really, really fast towards the planet, and they just punch through one side of the planet and come out the other and destroy the entire thing. Like, these are some really cool fights and it just activates my inner 14-year-old boy that makes me go, oh, that's so awesome, that's so cool, man. Like, I really I really loved it. And sometimes this series is funny, too. Like, in fact, a lot of the time it's really funny. There is one running gag which get really got really old after a while, which is just some people have sex a lot and when other people are nearby, it is uh, disturbing to them and they're like no stop making so much noise and like it's funny the first couple of times but it's really obnoxious after a while and you know what that's about all i have to say like invincible it's not always a smart series but overall it's not a dumb one either it's just not really a subversion of superhero stuff at least not overall you know there's parts of it that are especially at the beginning but after a while it kind of just becomes more of that but i would still recommend it to people because even if you're a little wary of that superhero thing, because this does still feel somewhat different because of the few bits that it does differently. And again, it does eventually end. Even something like the MCU never ends, but I don't know. In Invincible's pretty good. You should check it out. A huge thanks to everyone who bothered to watch this far for whatever reason. I don't know who would want to listen to me talk for half an hour. But especially a huge thanks to all my patrons whose names are on here, including the $10 and up patrons, Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Christopher Quinton, Dan Antsilijovic, Echo, Joel, Karkat Kitsune, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Madison Lewis Bennett, Marilyn Roxy, Microphone, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, and of course, as always, Vevictus. Y'all are the best, really. Let me, let me tell you that. Like, if you were here, I, I'd i kiss you. I wouldn't actually kiss you, but, you know, you're, you're all pretty cool anyways. So, uh, just don't, don't take my, just, um, okay, yeah, goodbye.